Hi garden gals and guys, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden and today I'm coming to you doing something a little bit different. Today is August 1st, happy August, and I wanted to cut some flowers today, make a bouquet, and it just so happens I've got a little fall vibe going here. Too soon? Nah. So I went out into the garden to see what I could cut and I came up with this. This is not in position. This is just what I'm holding my flowers in. Probably just need to get a little bucket from the garage, but I'm going to arrange these into this. And what I'm trying today is the egg. Now I've not used this before and apparently this is more specifically for like a bridal bouquet to hold, but I wanted to see how it would work in a vase. The other one I got is some chicken wire that comes like in a roll. I got both of these from Hobby Lobby. So today I'm gonna use the egg. The next time I do one, I'm gonna use the chicken wire. See what I like better. If I like one better, then just sticking those stems in to a regular vase with nothing at the bottom. That's what we're doing today. I'm not a bouquet expert at all, and I don't have any floral hydrator or quick dip, which is like a floral hydrator. And if you notice this red leaf mahogany hibiscus, it is wimpy, which means it wants to wilt after being picked. A hydrator would help that. So today I'm just experimenting and seeing what can work. Another note, I picked all of these and then I realized I don't really have any greenery. So I went out with my really professional looking vase here and snapped off one stem. Yes, this is one stem. This whole thing is honeywort or syrinth. So I can use all of those stems as greenery in there. Isn't that funny? One stem. So I'm gonna open this now. This was $3.99, as I said, at Hobby Lobby. So this here simply comes apart and then you can clip it back in together. And now I'm going to put, it's a fully clipped in. There we go, it snaps. Put this into my vase that already has some water in it. Ask her if she checked to see if this face would work with this. Sure won't. Plan B, friends. Plan B. We're using chicken wire today. This was $4.99 from Hobby Lobby. Let's hope this goes a little bit smoother. Okay, I got some wire cutters to cut this. I don't want to use my Falco shears to do that and ruin them. So, let's see. We'll go about here. and make cuts and then I'm just gonna wad it into a ball and see how that works. This vase has a bit of a weird shape. You can see the top? Looks like it's melting. Voila! Here's what it looks like from the inside. So now the stems have a place to go into which can hold them with a little more rigidity than if I just stuck them in there. Now the fun part, we're actually gonna put the arrangement together. And I just wanna show you a few of these stems because they're just gorgeous. I showed these in my last video because they truly are a surprise in July. Mr. Fokker, Fokker, I don't know why I can never say that name correctly. Anemone. This one's even prettier. Nice long stems on them too. Look at the layers in that one. Oh my gosh. And here we have Lady Coral Lavender Aster. These are doing much better for me this year and I'm growing them in a ceramic pot. But really beautiful lavender color there. And then we have Sahara Mix Rudbeckia. So a bunch of different colors here. And for all of these, I'm not necessarily cutting them actually when they should be cut. I just haven't been in the garden in a while, to be honest, and I needed to cut some. So I just cut what I thought was pretty, but isn't that a pretty mix? Oh yeah, especially for fall. Then we have Scabiosa, Black Knight Scabiosa 
is probably my favorite. It is so stunning and almost a fluorescent black purplish. Even the white parts of this, if you can see it on the inside, are kind of fluorescent. It's really, really interesting. And then cherry caramel flax. This, as far as fragrance, is by far the most aromatic. We'll bring a little bit of light colors in there with this. And lastly, calendula. This, I believe, is the flashback mix, but this orange color, I think, will look nice against the purplish of the Lady Coral Lavender and the Red Leaf Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. Usually colors opposite each other on the color wheel look good together. So that's what I was thinking with this. People use, use calendula a lot for like soaps and different uh, osteopathic things, I believe. Um, I don't do that, but it's a pretty flower for sure. And my workstation's already a mess. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is just get after it and put all of these stems in there. I'm gonna start with greenery first and go from there. We'll see how it looks at the end. Let's have some fun. Greenery is in. I'm gonna start with this. And we'll go from there. I'm gonna break these up. I think I'll be better served with them on individual stems. Let's do the Sahara Mix Rudbeckia next. Here's how we're looking so far. I'm digging the structure. I think I need to put the red leaf mahogany in the back so I've got some more. It's not greenery, but act as a greenery there. I can see how the hydrator would definitely help. Pretty wimpy. Anemones next. I'm gonna face the front toward you because I feel like this has a front and a back. Oh no. I broke the stem. Okay, I think it's time to bring in the cherry caramel flax, some neutral cream in there. Okay, we're starting to come together a little more. Really liking this side. I feel like I need to find some things to take up space over here. Let's come in with Scabiosa. I think these will add a nice whimsical feeling too because of their structure. So I'm liking how the bottom layer is looking. Again, I like this side besides the droopy red leaf hibiscus, mahogany red leaf hibiscus, but I think that's just gonna droop because I don't have hydrator in here. But these scabiosa are not giving me the structure I need. I am going to cut more Sahara, Rudbeckia, and one more mahogany red leaf hibiscus, I think, too. Here's how nice and 
tall and sturdy they look before being picked. And aren't these a spectacle? Especially that really red one. So pretty. Let's see if we can bring it all together here, shall we? That mahogany splendor hibiscus really is wilty. I mean, I just cut this one. So definitely gonna get quick dip. I love this view. Right here. With that anemone poking out. You are so beautiful. Okay, so I broke a lot of rules with this. I didn't pick the flowers during the cool of the day in the morning or late at night when the temperatures were down. I did not use any hydrator solution, no quick dip or quick drip to keep those wimpy flowers, especially the mahogany red splendor hibiscus from here looks like such a sad story. But imagine if those were perky. So that's a huge lesson learned. But I tell you what, that was a great experiment. And here's what I like about it. I like that the colors are different. I like that it's got a fallish look, but not necessarily a fall look that you see all the time every year. I like the blends of lavender and orange and the softest touch of a dark pink and playing off of the mahogany splendor hibiscus. What I really, really don't like is the mahogany splendor hibiscus looking like this. Would I give this to someone if this wasn't wilted? Yes, I think it'd be good enough to give to someone if this wasn't wilted. Would I give it to them looking like this? No. So I double checked and the name of that hydrating solution is Quick Dip. That I'm buying like five minutes ago. I need that now. Uh, I know that after this arrangement, the things we learn, right? I'm really analyzing it now. I also really enjoy the Sahara Rudbeckia in it. I think that's a nice focal flower. It's pretty much the focal flower of this bouquet, but I like that there's different textures like the Lady Coral Lavender Aster and the Calendula has a totally different look as well. And then of course, my favorite flower in this arrangement has to probably be the Mr. Foker. I mean, look at this one again. Oh so pretty and I like that it's such a unique color this flower and that I was able to work it in with something like this I think it works which is pretty fun so will I put it on my kitchen table yes I will do I think there's room for improvement absolutely did I learn something absolutely but I'm really kind of here for this unique fall color palette I do like that Yay! And here we are at my kitchen table where this is going to live. Honestly, the flowers probably won't live more than three days because they were cut after they should have been harvested, more than likely. But it's pretty. I just can't get over this one. You are handsome. But I forgot to talk about the chicken wire. I do think the chicken wire gave it more structure as far as individual stems going in and holding a position. I do think there's probably something that's even better though, which I'm guessing is a floral frog, but again, I don't have any experience with that. So please comment below and let me know what you use at the bottom of your vases. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel to follow along here with all things garden. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Happy planting. Bye.